Good morning, everyone. This is uh, Scott Fischetti, and I just want to thank everyone today for joining our, our session this morning on, um, you know, as you all are probably aware of, uh, the session is around understanding Geopets to new data products. So we're really excited to talk about that today. And um, just a couple housekeeping rules before I do jump into it. Um, please feel free to ask questions throughout the session. We will have uh, periods throughout the session where we'll pause and, and try to field everybody's questions. And again, if we don't get to your question today, we do apologize. We will try to follow up after the session as well. But again, we will try to answer as many questions as possible. Please, please use the, the, the question widget within inside the Zoom uh, uh, platform. That's usually the easiest way for us to, to see the questions. And um, we can just jump right into it on the next slide. Just want to introduce who's going to be on the, uh, the session for today. And that is, uh, there we go. Um, so joining uh, me today are Dylan Maven from Geopath, as well as Matthew Mar Martimo, who's co-founder of Intermix, and one of our uh, key partners who's helped us develop and get this data to, to all of you. And, uh, but just to take a few steps back before we do jump into it, I want to talk a little bit about, uh, to set the stage and give some background on what we do as Geopath, because it really helps inform where we're moving towards and why, provides context for these products that we're going to be talking about today. So Geopath impressions are, are traditionally used as a, as a forecasting metric. Oops. Um, sorry, Dylan. Uh, it's, uh, Dylan, there you go, are, are traditionally used as a forecasting metric in order to predict audience delivery for out-of-home campaigns, right? Um, and to, to, to get that product, we use, you know, forecasting methods that are used to predict traffic patterns. And these impressions have been estimated based on these historical trends, right? So, but obviously everything changed in March of 2020 with, with the COVID-19, unfortunately. And so that made us have to relook and re-examine what we were doing and was the impetus for these two products that we're gonna talk about today. So, and that's what we do wanna talk about today. First, we're gonna demonstrate the recently released population activity dashboard. And we'll talk about uh, the methodology behind how we get to that data, as well as guidance on how to interpret these data. And then after that, we'll, we'll talk about the, the coming product, the weekly adjusted impressions report, uh, that's scheduled for release within the next uh, the next uh, one to two weeks. And then also, again, we'll, as I said, we'll try to answer questions throughout, but we also will have periods where we'll pause and just make sure we're answering everybody's questions as we go through. Um, and with that, I'm gonna hand it off to Dylan, who's gonna drive a lot of the conversation and the demonstration. And um, we'll, uh, like I said, try to answer any questions as we go through. Wonderful. Well, uh, thank you, Scott, and thank you all for uh, attending today's webinar. Uh, I know it's been a very stressful uh, a couple of weeks for everyone across the country. Um, out of home communities been severely impacted. So we have heard you, and we have been working diligently to put some together some data products as responsibly as possible. Uh, and we hope that these two will help uh, answer a lot of your questions and understand what's happening out there and uh, how things have been changing and when things may be uh, coming back to, to normal or whatever that new normal may, may be. <clears throat> and so the first data product that we put together for uh, not only our members, actually we're making this public, uh, is the population activity dashboard. And so this provides day-to-day -day monitoring uh, of the full population broken out by CBSA and by state. Um, and what this allows us to do is to understand sort of the travel trends across the country and regionally uh, and within some metropolitan areas. And the data illustrates the daily miles traveled and the daily miles traveled is compared against the average daily miles traveled for 2019. So we're using 2019 as the benchmark for uh, the difference of what we're seeing. And this kind of goes back to what Scott was saying, the geopath traditionally creates a forecast of what is going to happen. And the forecast for 2020 was created uh, in 2019. So knowing what we knew uh, toward the end of 2019, when we created the forecast, what we're looking at now is how have things changed since then? And in the dashboard, you'll see that um, a couple of different ways of looking at the data and the data is updated every day. So you'll be able to see lots of information in there. 
So uh, a little bit of guidance on this data product, how to use it, what is it for? The real-time travel activity dashboard should be used to understand trends by market as impacted by regulations and restrictions. We know that um, the federal level, uh, state, local level regulations, travel restrictions, whatever it may be, happened at different times across the country as this pandemic swept through uh, the US. Um, and so this allows us to look at those different regions separately to understand how trends have changed. Also different areas have very different travel patterns to begin with. So it's very nice uh, to be able to look at this information, cut those different ways. And with this, you'll also be able to monitor uh, how activity has changed and also how it is going to be returning to the new normal. And you'll see that in many areas, uh, the travel changes have in fact stabilized. So that's good. One important thing that I wanted to throw out here is that this first data product, the activity dashboard, is not intended to be used as a substitution for impression delivery. Uh, it is not to be applied as a factor to impression metrics uh, because distance traveled, while a very good indicator of how people are moving and if they are moving at all, is not a perfect pr uh, predictor of traffic volume on roadways. And Geopath looks at traffic volume on every roadway to create their impressions. And that's where we're going with the second product. Uh, but this product right now uh, is an activity um, dashboard, and it's, again, not to be used to adjust impressions. Scott, is there anything that you would like to add? Well, I think I'd like to add that uh, these data are not intended to be used as a substitution for impression delivery. But this is a key slide, I think, for, for us and for, for this product as well. And just can, can't overemphasize that with, with this product. Thanks. Um, and that really, um, that's, we're going to address that in the second data product, but that, that's one that we've been working on diligently with our, uh, with our committees and with our data partners to make sure that we do get a useful data product to, to understand the impression changes. But the first step here was just to make sure that we could understand the activity uh, at larger geographies. And so we've been able to package this up in a nice little dashboard. So one of the questions we wanted to make sure we were able to answer on this is to talk about the methodology. So how are we able to understand travel distance and travel activity uh, across the country? Well, uh, working with Intermix as our partners, we've been able to look at background SDK data and determine the average distance traveled by mobile devices that meet a certain criteria of quality uh, within each market. And so what we're able to do is we're able to look at that location data across multiple days of the week on uh, different hours of the day to calculate the distance that the population moves throughout each market. Uh, and the distance in the dashboard you'll see is reported as the median miles traveled every day, as well as a rolling average of the median miles traveled every day. You'll see some very um, uh, expected uh, ebbs and flows in the data. Of course, weekends, less travel than weekdays, things like that. So a seven day rolling average is very helpful to sort of show stability uh, over time. Uh, and then also one of the really helpful metrics is the change as a difference against the 2020, sorry, the 2019 average daily distance traveled. Again, how is 2020 different from what we expected 2020 when we created those forecasts in 2019? All right, so here's an example of how we would go about calculating the total distance traveled. So um, I live over in Brooklyn, and when I go to work in Midtown, um, I travel in, into Midtown, I may go to a, a meeting, may go to lunch, uh, come back home, uh, and on a good day, I'll take my dog for a walk if the weather's pleasant. Post-COVID, now, if I'm lucky, taking the dog for a walk. So I'm not traveling that much. And as we should, we should be exercising social distance. We should be very responsible. Um, and so this is what that metric really is. Now, some of the things that we want to show in this dashboard is how have traveled patterns changed from 2019 and what we knew building the forecast for 2020 to what we're actually observing now in 2020. So for 2019 in Chicago, the daily median miles traveled is 15.1. So in the, in the Chicago CBSA, 
median 50% of the population traveled at least 15.1 miles every day. That's their average movement. When, we, when we're looking at every week of 2019, we're seeing very different metrics. And I pulled out two distinct weeks here to make a, a very important point. 2020, forget COVID, was already a weird year. Uh, gas prices were incredibly cheap. We barely had a winter in some regions of the country. And so travel patterns were already much higher than we anticipated. And we're seeing those travel behaviors in uh, almost every single market across the US. So this week of February 17th through 23rd was in fact 41% higher than the median that we expected from 2019. Whereas fast forward to a couple weeks ago, actually last week, um, March, or sorry, yeah, a week and a half ago, uh, March 30th through April 5th, uh, after the uh, you know, shelter in place, travel restrictions have gone in, uh, into effect. Um, the daily median travel is down uh, to 6.7 miles, uh, a, a decrease of about 56% versus that uh, 2019 median. So again, travel hasn't stopped, but it's gone down significantly in most areas. All right, so let's jump into the dashboard. One sec. So real quick, I wanted to uh, talk about where you can access this uh, this travel dashboard, uh, this activity dashboard. So you can go to our uh, the Geopath website and you can see it right here on the main page. We have the new da Geopath data solutions. We have our uh, activity dashboard right here. So you can click here, go directly to the dashboard. You, you can uh, go to the URL explore, sorry, not explore, uh, travel.geopath.io. Uh, and then starting next week, you will actually have uh, the ability to look at this travel dashboard inside the Insight Suite as well. So here's a little preview of what that's going to look like. So it just fits in natively within a new module. So we're doing a, a mobility module so people can see this dashboard inside the Insight Suite. So some quick uh, quick overview of how to use the, uh, the activity module. Uh, there's four different tabs in here. We have a CBSA Explore tab. We have a CBSA Report tab. And we have the State Explorer tab and the State Report tab. Now, the big difference between the Explorer tab and the Report tab is really in the layout. Information is the same. Uh, and the CBSA Report tab is really nice because if you want, I'm, I'm clicking on a particular CBSA. So I'm clicking on New York. And you can see that it updates the charts here with the percentage change. Again, this is the rolling average. Uh, the seven-day rolling average compared to the 2019 benchmark. So this is this top chart is uh, represented as a percentage change, and the second chart here is the daily miles traveled. This is the seven-day rolling average, and then you're also seeing here the daily miles traveled uh, daily. Uh, and so this is broken down every single day. As you can see, we have Saturdays and Sundays every single week. Some very familiar patterns of how things are fluctuating and things. Uh, sort of uh, stabilizing again in New York, uh, the New York metropolitan area, which is good news. And you can click in uh, different areas. We see Seattle. You can see the changes in Seattle happened a little bit earlier than they happened in New York. And if you hold down the shift bus button as you're navigating, sorry, sorry, the control button as you're navigating, you can click on multiple markets simultaneously and they'll both show up in the dashboard. So that's also very helpful. And then you can change the extent or the period with which the data uh, is shown up on the uh, chart. So I'm gonna cut the chart off just to March and April. And you can see sort of this hone in on these, these declines over that particular period. Additionally, if you want to uh, go to a particular period in time, you can go to, uh, you can use the little slider here on the map and go to a particular date and you can hit the play button. And so let's see how well this visualization works on the video. But you're seeing just about 
the middle of the month is when travel restrictions happened, especially on the East Coast, San Francisco, and then all of a sudden everything's going to start turning orange as the uh, change against 2019 expected travel distances starts starts dropping dramatically. So that's an interesting little visual. I'm going to pause that. I'm going to slide all the way down to the last date. So this again, this is updated every day and with the uh, data that's uh, as fast as we can process it. So this is from two days ago. And again, if you want to select m multiple markets, I'm going to click on New York. I'm going to hold the control button. I'm going to click on Baton Rouge. I'm going to click on Denver. I'm going to click on Dallas. And I'm going to click on San Francisco and Nashville. I'm going to change this again. I'm going to slide back for the whole year so we can see the whole year's worth of activity. Uh, and this top chart is helpful uh, because it sort of normalizes everything, whereas different markets have different travel distances in general. So you're going to see areas like Baton Rouge and uh, I'm guessing this is Nashville and Dallas, um, much more car focused markets. So, so people are traveling much larger markets also spreading out. So the, the population in general is traveling further distances. But when you represent it as a percentage change, you can see uh, behaviors in the market. So San, San Francisco and Seattle started um, dropping uh, earlier than others. One of the interesting uh, points that we did observe um, going back into um, the data, uh, it was sometime around late February, mid to late February, that the governor of California issued a state of emergency. And so in California, you actually see this sort of preemptive decrease in activity as people's behaviors change. And then people started thinking that it might have been a little bit too early, kind of came back. And then all of a sudden, um, other restrictions started being put in, into effect, and we, we did see these more, more uh, longer-lasting decreases. So some in, interesting patterns in there. Uh, one of the other ways that you can select markets is by clicking on the map, map and dragging. You can create a little box there, and so this is going to select a lot of them in Florida, and you can see multiple changes. Of course, Miami hit very severely by this, and so you're seeing decreases in some of the most densely populated markets um, dropping versus others. Um, hey, hey uh, Dylan? Yep. Just a quick question as you're doing that. A um, couple of questions just came in about the, the how to use the tool itself. One question was wondering if you could explain again the what the numbers on the left side of the charts mean. And then also if you could show, I, I know you just showed how to kind of scroll, you know, and do a bunch of uh, CBSAs, but could you show, like if you wanted to do just two, would you, could you demonstrate how to do that as well? Sure, um, all right, so I'm gonna click off of any CBSA, it'll reset the map, and then I'm going to select Los Angeles and San Diego. So I can click on Los Angeles, and then I'm going to now hold down the control button on my keyboard and then click in San Diego, and it's going to also select that market. Now, the metrics on the, the, the left, so the, the, uh, the axes, titles, and the, the ranges, so this is uh, a 50% change versus the 2019 uh, average. And so this is where we're talking about the beginning of 2019 was much more active than we expected. Uh, again, this sort of gets back to gas was cheaper, economies roaring, uh, weather was mild, and there was a lot of movement in general. And we're seeing this from other data sources. We've been monitoring stuff from Google. We've been monitoring stuff from other mobile location providers. Apple just released some insights, and we're seeing these similar traffic patterns uh, and movement patterns from other data sources that have slightly different methodologies. So it's been very reassuring that we're all sort of coming to the same conclusions. I'm going to hop over to the state report. And you can see here, we can just click at the entire state level. And the, uh, the Explorer um, tabs 
are a little bit more compact and shows all this information all in a little bit more com, uh, confined space, which can be helpful also if, you're, if you've got that limitation. And so we can select, again, I'm gonna click while holding down the control button. The New England states. The other way I could do that is just by clicking on the map and selecting them with the rectangle. So Dylan, just a couple of small questions. Is there a limit to the number of markets that you could compare if you wanted to, or you know, CBSAs? Okay. Yep, you can select everything. Mm -hmm. Great. And then just to- And these are just the, uh, sorry, one, one point of clarification also. These are just the uh, metropolitan CBSAs. Uh, we have not started reporting uh, the micropolitan CBSAs. Metropolitan CBSAs are, are markets that are, are very, very large. Uh, my, uh, micropolitan CBSAs still are, are big cities, but are often made up of only one county uh, with populations um, often closer to like 50,000 people. And we have uh, just not reported those yet. We have that information. We're just trying to make sure that the information that we're looking at is stable and representative. Cool. And while you can select all of them, my computer and my internet connection does not like this <laughs> action. And, and to some extent, there's, this leads into another question. Um, can you select a CBSA and look at it against like a national average? Or ju it's just basically comparing the different CBSAs to each other, correct? The, yeah, this is the just difference. comparing CBSA to CBSA. Um, that may be something that we can explore as looking mm -hmm. at a, a national uh, baseline. Hey, Dylan. Yes. Uh, we've also gotten a couple questions about just other uh, other sort of market sizes besides D, uh, CBSA. Oh, uh, right. Um, yeah, so we're not seeing DMAs yet in here. Uh, we can, we just haven't processed them yet because what we're trying to understand here is travel behavior. Uh, and CBSAs are in fact defined the, by the US government and according to commuting travel behavior. So this was a, a, a fairly stable view of doing that. Whereas DMAs are defined by Nielsen and also um, structured around um, signal attenuation from broadcast television. So we understand that that's a baseline that a lot of people are looking at. We'll be reporting impression changes by DMA, uh, but we'll see whether or not we are even allowed to display DMA boundaries on a map uh, per the Nielsen license. So it's a little bit of a TBD there. Uh, one of the other navigation um, shortcuts that'll be helpful, if you hold down the shift button and then you click on the map, you can pan the map. And one of the questions was whether or not uh, Alaska and let's go computer. So Alaska and Hawaii are not part of this. We're just looking at the uh, continental United States. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the, the data behind this or exporting this, basically we, you can export the visual, but the, the, there's no way to export the, the raw data, correct? Uh, that's that's correct. Yeah, so you can visual click down here at the bottom. You can export these as images or as PDFs. So I could just export the state map that I'm working on right now, and it'll export this as uh, you can change the portrait. And so that'll export this individual map that I have right there. Mm -hmm. And just one, um, as you're doing that, just one caveat for those using a Mac, I believe the multi-select is command versus control on a Mac, just one subtle, subtle difference. Thank you, Scott. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
so I'm going to switch back to the other presentation real quick. Um, all right, and so just to recap, uh, we are monitoring all sorts of travel patterns as, as best we can, and uh, we're going to be updating our membership as we see changes occurring, uh, especially when we start seeing growth uh, in a lot of these markets as restrictions are lifted. Now, keep in mind, similarly to how travel restrictions went into place at different times to different severity to different extents and had different effects, same thing's going to happen as we come out of this. We're going to see different restrictions lifted at different times for different populations, different markets, different states. Uh, and so we'll be communicating what we're observing as well to our members. But if you want to go in and dig, um, by all means, that's what this dashboard's for. Okay. So product number two, and this is the one that everyone has really been asking for, and we've been trying to figure out the best way to do that as responsibly and uh, accurately as possible. So we appreciate everyone's patience as we have been shifting. Uh, this is not the cadence of uh, data processing that Geopass has traditionally been asked to do. Uh, and this is something that we are very excited to be able to provide for everyone, and we're really, um, really happy that we are going to be able to deliver on this. So what this will be is a weekly adjusted impression report. And again, this is a report. We are not going to be providing unit by unit impression changes. So we're not saying unit one, two, three, four in, um, in Spokane is down 25% for the week of March 30th through April 5th. This is going to be ranges by media type, by market. And so here's a mock-up uh, for Metropolis CBSA of uh, the different media types that are there and the impression changes versus the 2020 forecast, low, average, and high. Again, this is going to be a report with impression changes uh, provided in ranges by geography and market and by out of phone media format. So we're gonna get a lot of questions on how are we going about doing this. And so this is where we wanna make sure that everyone understands how we're going about this and where we're getting this information. So from a very top level, what we're doing is we're looking at the historically adjusted impressions and we are looking at that forecast and the deviations of activity versus that forecast. So we're looking at a couple different dimensions. Uh, we're looking at total distance, the size of the area that people are traveling. This is the view shed, or sorry, view shed, travel shed. You may have seen some, um, some materials going out from us about this and earlier emails to membership. Uh, we're also looking at the volume and frequency of trips on roadways by different area types and different road types. And we'll get into some of that. So about this mobile panel, this is one of the most common questions that we get. We have access to hundreds of millions of devices, but not all devices can give you any sort of information that you can do anything with. So of all the mobile devices that we can uh, leverage, uh, we're looking at a panel of about 10, 10 million devices uh, that are used every day for seven days, meaning those same devices are seen seven days in a week. So we have a longitudinal relevance. We are also making sure that we're looking at devices that we observe or can observe at least eight hours per day. Now those devices may not leave their place of residence, or maybe they are one of those days or two of those days traveling to go shopping, or maybe they're a central employee and they're going to work uh, multiple times during the week. So again, we are looking at a subset of all devices that are a highly qualified panel that, um, that generate a significant amount of information that we can then understand its representativeness of the full population to apply these factors uh, and ultimately adjust traffic volumes on roadways. Matthew, anything that you wanna add on that or that? No, I think that that's, that's probably the biggest, um, the biggest uh, differentiator where we uh, spend a lot of the time is in um, understanding the, 
representative sample and how that allows us to understand the population as a whole versus just individual um, device locations. So uh, one of the dimensions that I, we already talked about was the total distance traveled. This is the metric that we are com communicating out by market. Uh, so we're looking at how, how far people are traveling. Um, we're also looking at how large are people's worlds. Um, now, this is also a very interesting metric because it sort of shows the constricting of people's uh, lives down to around their home. Um, and while I, I could be making you know, 10 trips that are two miles long uh, and have 20 miles of distance, my travel shed is still only two miles and I'm still in this very small confined area. So this is a very interesting uh, way of looking at travel activity. Uh, the other dimension uh, that we have been moving very rapidly on, um, and thankfully this groundwork has been done at Geopath over the past years in the roll out and the uh, auditing of inventory for our new measurement system. I guess it's not new now, this is the new new one. But the, 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 uh, the new 2020 metrics that are going into the Insight Suite, uh, we've gone through an incredibly thorough auditing process to make sure that we are able to identify all of the visible roadways within the view sheds of out of home inventory. So what we're looking at is we're looking at the roadways uh, uh, and the activity of mobile devices on those roadways traveling through those view sheds. And we're summarizing this information and analyzing this information by county, by area type, and by road type, and of course by media type. So, um, if, if you haven't seen some of this or, um, or, or looked at some of the materials on our website, just so everyone knows how Geopath goes about, goes about auditing inventory, uh, we actually are looking at every single roadway and hand curating all of the roadway assignments to capture the traffic volumes that are traveling on those road networks, both for vehicular and for pedestrian audiences, to make sure we, we accurately measure things like distance to the road, uh, dwell time, et cetera. Uh, and so what we're doing is we're taking geofences from those audited inventory and the roadways, more specifically the roadways from which those inventories can be seen to capture movement on those roadways. We're doing this for large formats, street furniture, uh, and also walls. Uh, some of the dimensions that we're monitoring this activity, uh, we're looking at this by road classifications. Of course, different roadways are used for different purposes. Uh, highest order roadways would be something like an interstate for high volume, maximum speed, going in between metropolitan areas, long distance travel, all the way down to local roadways, which would be your local neighborhood roadway, but it also may be a local roadway in front of a store. This is basically how you are accessing, if you turn off the street to an address, that's a local road. Uh, and now as we're looking at the activity by road class, we're seeing some interesting patterns. So uh, more local roadways where you would see businesses, more um, uh, uh, local arterial collector roadways, we're seeing decreases. Interstates, a little bit less so, less severe decreases as others. So that's an interesting takeaway as we've been monitoring this. Uh, the other dimensions that we're looking at is this by place type. So we're looking at core business districts, urban business districts, urban areas, suburban areas, and rural areas. Again, we would expect very different travel patterns in these areas, and we are in fact seeing different travel patterns in those areas uh, in line with expectations. And uh, this is very reassuring as we're starting to cut this data in, in these multiple ways. So uh, as expected, we're seeing uh, dramatic decreases in central business districts as businesses are closing, people are working from home, restaurants are, are closed, gathering spaces are closed, urban businesses uh, areas, urban areas, suburban areas, a little bit less severe, and then rural areas, um, uh, very interesting as far as um, the different place types. So rural areas by nature are a little bit more socially distant, um, still very friendly of course, but just a little bit more spread out. So um, the tra travel changes there have been less severe as they have been in, in highly densely populated areas. 
So one of the things that we also wanted to just reiterate is that this is going to be a report. This is by ranges for specific dates going all the way back to the first week of 2020. So I think this week we are in the, is the 14th or 15th week of the year. Uh, and so as time goes on, we will continue to update uh, the weekly metrics uh, for these ranges by media type. Now, this is going to be available um, to members only. Uh, impression metrics are available to Geopath members as our impression, this, this impressions report. It will be made available through the Insight Suite and also behind a uh, um, uh, credential uh, login uh, for Geopath members. Again, the activity dashboard, this, uh, this daily activity dashboard is going to be made available to, to the public as it has been since the 14th. So that's available at travel.geopath.io. And Geopath members will be able to get access to that uh, activity dashboard as well as the insights, the, the impression uh, reports through the insights suite itself. Great. And I think that that's pretty much it. Yep, cool. Um, and thank you everybody that's been asking, uh, asking questions throughout. I know some of them were answered directly, but one question going back to the, um, the, the last product we were talking about, the impression product. Um, if you could just clarify again, which media types we will be able to provide those impressions for and just a little more uh, clarity on that. There's a couple of questions around that. Um, like, will, will we see that for transit, et cetera? Uh, this first version of it is, is going to be for roadside. We are still working on some of the other different media classifications and how this is going to impact those. Um, so place-based, we, you know, as, as many people out there know, Geopath is rolling out its place-based methodologies. Um, one of the reasons we're able to do this uh, as quickly uh, as a turnaround to be able to roll out this new data product is because of actually a lot of the infrastructure that we've built for place-based measurement. And so we're going to be monitoring place activity as well, looking at those POIs and seeing how foot traffic has changed as well. It'll probably be in a similar structure to what you're seeing here, but uh, I don't have a timeline on that yet. Great. Okay. Um, and just another question on what to expect potentially when, when we start to see these, uh, the impression product coming out. Um, were they, are they going to be as ranges or what, what would be the expectation there just to clarify again? Yes, the impression product is going to be by ranges. So for example, uh, uh, on the slide right now, uh, bulletins and metropolis for the week of March 30th through April 5th were down uh, on average 56% uh, and within a confidence interval uh, ranges between 51 and 46 percent. And the reason why we left this in here as ranges, we've been discussing this extensively with a lot of our committees on how to uh, provide a useful product without sort of um, forcing people into uh, a challenging conversation on the buying and selling uh, side, is to recognize that not every single unit is going to be impacted. We're going to drill down as far as far as we can, but we want to make sure that we recognize that there is going to be some unique fluctuations uh, inside of the marketplace, inside of some different area types. And going back into how we're analyzing this, we are looking at this by area type and by road class. Um, we may be adding some other dimensions to this report as time goes on, as we see more stability in the data and more confidence in the data. But right now, the, the, the reporting level that we're going to be looking at is at this market level um, by media type, by range. And, and when this product comes out, just to let everybody know, we'll, we will do a, another set of webinars just like this, walking everybody through, giving you a demonstration of it, showing you where and how to access this data. Again, this will be a product for, for members only. And uh, we, we definitely want to make sure we're supporting you all and providing all the information to help you access it and really understand how to use that data. Yeah, so similar to like the, the best practices document, um, what what do you do with this? And so we're working with the Futures Council and the Insights Committee on, on how to interpret this information and, and, and what, what should you be doing? 
And also this session today, we'll, we will have a link up on our website uh, before the end of the day, so you can rewatch this. And we're also doing another session again tomorrow. Again, a similar walkthrough for those that couldn't join today to, um, you know, to be able to ask other questions. And if you, again, if you do want to join again, if you have new questions, definitely feel free to join and, and ask questions there. We know there were a bunch of questions and we're trying to get to everybody's questions as much as possible. So if we don't get to answer your question today, uh, please forgive us and we'll, we will be trying to follow up right after the sessions as well. Yeah, we can update our, um, probably like a blog post too with some FAQs coming out of this because this is, I think without a doubt, the largest attendance we've had for a webinar. So thanks everybody. Um, very, I guess, reassuring that uh, this is definitely something that people are needing. And so we're glad that everyone's here and we'll take your questions uh, and organize them as best we can. Great. Um, just trying to, to just check to see question wise if there's anything else that. Uh, uh, just again, the video will be posted on our, the, if you go to the Geek Out section of our website and scroll down to the out of home office hours, that's where this session will, will be posted as well. Um, oh, one question just about the product itself, the, the, the impression product. Uh, for the adjusted impressions, will you be able to select a specific time frame ultimately? Do you anticipate that when it's out? Um, yeah, so each report will include uh, ranges by week. So it will be by market, by media type, by week with the ranges. So this little table here is just showing one week. I can do another little mock-up of what it would look like for an, a, a, another week as well. Yeah, so you'll be able to look at it over time. So it'll be, again, every week of the year going back to the first week of 2020. Okay. And um, there, there's a question about the, the impression product coming out. And when, we, when it does come out, will we be talking about, again, similarly like we did today, how it, how it would be used and how it should be used? And you know, what are the limitations, if any, there are in the data in terms of how it should be used and how it shouldn't be used? And, and the answer, again, yes, we, we will be doing that as a session. Um, and there's another question within that of uh, providing confidence ranges. Um, yes, yeah, so that's that's the the low and the high is it the confidence yeah. ranges, and we can provide a confidence um, metric with that as well, in addition to the range. And I think it's going to be dependent upon the data and the market uh, as to how much signal we're receiving and the distribution of inventory in that marketplace. And just um, again, there's a question on anticipated release date of this report. Again, we're working as fast as we can to, to get this out. And we're again, we'll, we will be communicating through our newsletter and on our website as to when we're able to provide an exact date of when it's launch launches. But again, we're trying to get it out over the next one to two weeks. Is that fair, D Dylan? Is there, a, do we have more specifics that we can add to that or? We nope, that's that, that's board. that's our timeline right now. No, we're working real quick. We're meeting with uh, committees tomorrow um, and uh, as frequently as we can to make sure we're hammering this out as uh, accurate and the accurately and responsibly as possible. We understand the implications of providing something like this, and so we we hear you and we're we're working as quickly as we can. Great. All right. Um, so I, I think, um, again, like I said, there's, uh, we will try to follow up with any additional questions that, that um, anybody has that we didn't get to answer publicly today. And if you do have additional questions, again, feel free to reach out to us at geekout at geopath.org. We're here, we're happy to help as much as possible uh, with this or with any other questions you may have about any of our products or anything like that. So again, always feel free to reach out to us at geekout at geopath.org. And again, we will be having the same session tomorrow at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern time. And again, if you need to have that link sent to you again, or if you wanna share with anybody else and you need us to share with anybody on your team, again, feel free to reach out to us at geekout and we'll, we'll do that. 
But otherwise, thank you everyone. There's, as Dylan said, this was record number of people joining our sessions and we do appreciate the interest and we recognize these are important times and we wanna make sure we're providing as much information as possible to everyone. And uh, again, please always feel free to reach out to us if you do have questions. And again, I want to thank Dylan and Matthew for, for being on the session today as well. Thank you, Scott. And thanks to everyone out there. I um, hope everyone's staying safe and um, we'll get through this together. Great. Thank you, everyone. Have a good one.